Gobby Gaffer and part 12 of this season's Grassroots to Goal Boot starting with Rochdale AFC. And you catch me in the in the middle of a, a little tactical dilemma. Uh, things have not been going amazingly well, although we are still very well placed in the division. But uh, maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm overreacting, maybe I'm overthinking things. It's a strange one. You start the season off. You know, you're predicted to finish mid-table. The board will be quite happy avoiding relegation. Yet we end up second in the division, and that's my level then. I'm thinking, okay, fine. If we drop away from that, then it's a poor season. So psychologically, I'm thinking, you know what? We could actually get promoted this season. We're good enough. We've been getting some decent results. Clean sheets, again, have become a big problem. We can't seem to buy a clean sheet at the moment. Or that was the case. Let's have a quick look at the schedule and I can explain it a little bit more. So after the uh, Newport game that we won 2-1, we then had a Grimsby uh, at home in the FA Cup first round. A slim 3-2 in that one. Grimsby are in our division. So I thought we might have done a little bit better than that. And only 3,500 through the gate. It's not helping my FFP this. We need to start filling this stadium get the income better so we can start paying more wages out. But it's really hampering me at the moment. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, but then we played a Swindon. Again, I, another one of my bogey teams. The Gobby Gaffer career, Swindon, another one of my bogey teams. A 2-2 in that one at home and we were losing in that game. 5,300 through the door. So um, I kind of thought, OK, shall we? is it time to think about changing the tactic? So I did the usual thing. I got rid of one of the tactics, went into the, the planner there, and they were basically uh, recommending either a counter-pressing tactic or a Gagan press. Shall we try a Gagan press? I did do, but it was probably the wrong thing to do because you can't really play a Gagan press in this league with the number of games we've got to play. Gagan press, very high intensity. All my players were getting shattered after like 65 minutes. We did play it for a couple of games. We're playing a 4-2-4 and uh, we went away to Crewe, got a 2-1 win. And then uh, we played Grimsby again in the league this time. And this time uh, away from home, we got a 2-2. So we were con and still were conceding goals. We had got a few clean sheets early doors, but conceding lots of goals. So I went back to the drawing board and I thought, right, OK, let's get rid of the Gagan press. I don't think it was a gobby gaffer mistake. Sometimes you have to hold your hands up. Gobby gaffer mistake. Don't play Gagan press. So I went for the counter attacking. Uh, the wing play, I don't know why it wasn't working. I mean, essentially, particularly left side, we don't really have any wingers. Oscar Kelly is only 17 still. I know he's a three star with loads of potential. But he's still only 17. So he will in you know he, he will obviously have games where he's brilliant, but then he might have two or three games where he's not so great. And on that left hand side, we were struggling a little bit. Right hand side, I've got Bennett and Cheggers, who are two brilliant wingers, but they never fit. So um, we are playing with a winger system now, but it is more kind of through the centre and uh, more counter-attacking and trying to keep it very tight at the back. And the two uh, games that we played, two quite impressive results actually, kept clean sheets in both of them. So we're playing a 4-2-3-1 now, a 3-0 win at home against Morecambe. And then we've just played Charlton, a Skybet League 1 team, in the FA Cup second round. Yes, we're through to the third round. And uh, more about that in a second. But uh, again, a nice clean sheet and a 3-0 win in that one. And uh, we actually did get 6,500 through the door for that one. And in the third round of the Cup, I don't know whether it's on here. Yes, the third round of the Cup, we've got an away tie at Norwich. Uh, 27,000 crowd there getting at the moment. I've just had a look. They are filling their stadium every week. It... It would have been better if it was an Arsenal or a Manchester United or something like that to bring the money in. 27000 We'll just have to make do with it. But I think it will bring in a little bit of extra money. We got 67000 for beating Charlton. So maybe, you know, I don't know. Can we get half a million out of that game? Three, 400000 I'm not too sure. But uh, whatever we get, I don't think we'll progress. 
but whatever we get will be gratefully received. Just having a quick look on the finances page, and it's very, very interesting in this. It's very unlike me. I've still got a budget, transfer budget of 286,000. I'm well under the wage budget, but FFP is really tying my hands. Wage budget wise, we can only spend 36,500. Currently, 35,500. We have about a thousand pound a week to spare, but as you know, in Football Manager, trying to bring extra bodies in for less than a thousand pound a week, and I don't really want to go anywhere near that, otherwise, it might tip the balance. It's really, and my hands are really, really tied. However, we've uh, we've actually uh, kind of maintained the second position in the league. I think last time you saw me, we had dropped to third or fourth. But uh, recent results, we're doing okay now. And uh, we played 20 games, uh, 38 points. We're never catching MK Dons, I don't think. Uh, to be honest, I think we'll be lucky to get that third position uh, that Gillingham have got. And uh, guess who we played today? Yes, Gillingham. This is a six point of this one. We really need to win this game to put a little bit of daylight be between us and them. So with an away game against Gillingham and a home game against Gateshead, that's going to be today's episode. All to play for. If it can be, be another six point episode, um, it's kind of vital that it's a six point episode today because we don't want Gillingham um, stealing a march on us. Let's get stuck in. And with rumours of a takeover circulating around the Crown Oil Arena, today we're in Gillingham. It's the Priestfield Stadium and 11,000 capacity. I guess it should be full for today's game because this is, well, it's second versus third. And we're going to continue with this custom fluid counter-attacking style. We're on a cautious mentality and we have a low defensive line in this one. So trying to keep it very tight at the back. Don't concede any goals and hit them on the break. And it has been working in the last two games. Whether it will still work, I don't know. The team is Thomas in goal, back four of Kenlock, Belongo, Graham and Bernard. We have two DMs in today, Gilligan and Diallo. The wingers are Rodney and Bennett. Oscar Kelly is the attacking midfield player with Sinclair up front. So nearly 25 minutes on the clock and we get our first highlight. And the ball is in the back of the net from the very first highlight. And uh, we're losing 1-0. And with both teams tied on the same number of points, that elevates Gillingham to three points above us and into second place. Not ideal. But from a free kick there, the goalkeeper, don't know whether he was fouled or didn't cover himself in glory. Not too sure. So we are playing catch up now. And just that one highlight in the first half, we've had six shots, four on target. We're actually doing okay, but we are one nil down. So a couple of changes at half time. Uh, Gilligan has gone off, Francois has come on. I pushed him a little bit further forward. Oscar Kelly has gone off and McDermott has come on. And we've gone to a balanced mentality now. So we've got the ball at the back. Bernard now into Graham there. Um, this is not really the style that we want. We want to be, we want to be counter-attacking, and uh, this is playing it out from the back. So, not quite sure how successful this will be. We'll be doing a lot of this in the wing play system, but and our wing back there on the left-hand side is just bombed forward, and nobody's seen him. So we're going completely the opposite side to the wing back, who's actually Buster Gut to get forward. Bennett now, can he slide that ball across, Sinclair's there with his head and for once Sinclair gets his head right underneath the ball and heads it over Francois now, ball into the box and that looks like we might have a penalty there so some jiggery poker has gone on um, in the mass of players there that went up for that ball so somebody's either handled it or pulled one of our players so it's up to Sinclair now, can he put us level Yes, he can. It's 1-1. One, one. And a 1-1 one, one in this game would not be a disaster. We've had nine shots, five on tie. We've got an XG now, 1.27. So the changes that I've made have made a difference. 
Okay, a couple more changes. We have gone long ball now. I brought uh, Simmons on up front. So we've got Sinclair, Simmons up, up at the top. Hopefully we can get a ball to them and they can do the business. And Cheggers has come on for a tiring Rodney on the, the left wing. We do come back to a throw in. On that side there, Simmons back to McDermott. McDermott now who's dropped uh, slightly deeper in midfield. Belongo now, the centre-back. Ball over the top. That's a very, very poor ball. But that's been given to Sinclair. He's in the back of the net. He's 2-1. And that was so poor from the Gillingham defender. It looked like we'd actually made a, a, a poor pass ourselves. But we're 2-1 in the lead. Let's just have a quick look at that one again. Belongo there, a ball forward, and it looked like that was going nowhere. But Clark there heads the ball straight to Sinclair, who finds the net. With about 10 minutes of the game to play, Sherring has come on at centre-back. So it's quite an even game now, stats-wise. And uh, unfortunately, we do get a Gillingham highlight here with about 10 minutes of the game to go. But nicely stepped in by Kenlock, a ball forward. And Simmons there is not going to get to that one. I don't think they're going to make the same mistake again. So Gillingham do recover the uh, possession of the ball. Ball out there into the uh, defensive midfielder. Can we keep this? Uh, can we keep the game tight here? Ball through there. Another nice, nice cut out there at the back. We're really doing well at the back. Another nice cutout. Unfortunately, Gillingham do get the rub of the green there. And now they're actually coming forward. And that is given away as a penalty. Oh, my word. We had this game won. We did so much good defensive work there. So much good defensive work. And Gillingham just got the rub of the green when it when they needed it. It's back to 2-2. It's still not as a disaster at 2-2, but a 2-1 win here would have been absolutely magnificent. So we do get a highlight straight from the kickoff. Belongo now. Francois Kenlock. Kenlock ball forward there to Sinclair. But Simmons is running through. Oh no! Oh my word, that could have won the game for us. Oh, I'm stunned and shocked. What a miss there from Simmons. That could have sealed the points for us. Oh my word, 2-2 two, two draw at Gillingham. Not to be sniffed at, I have to say, but we have conceded another two goals. We need to start keeping more clean sheets it's not good enough. And unfortunately, we failed to capitalise there on Bradford City losing. So they're on 37 points. And the, the way things are going, the way to look at this now is these three teams go up. We need, at the very least, we need that third spot. We don't want to drop into fourth because that means the dreaded playoffs. And at the moment, Bradford City have that. Two points behind us. Us and Gillingham now on 39 points each. So a bit of a nail-biter there, and unfortunately we couldn't hang on to that 2-1 lead. And that Simmons miss in the dying minutes, oh my word, that will live with me for a long time. Okay, uh, we, can't, uh, we can't dwell on that. We have another game coming up thick and fast now. We have Gateshead, and uh, it's a home game. Let's see if we can get the three points in that one. We'll see you in the dugout. <clears throat> Well, welcome along to the Crown Oil Arena for this uh, important game against Gateshead. Skybet League 2, yes, it's hotting up. And uh, can we get one of those three promotion spots? Well, three points in this game would really help us along that way. The team is Thomas in goal, back four of Nevert, Belongo, Graham and Sherin. Diallo is the uh, ball winning midfielder today. Francois, who's been uh, knocking on my door saying he wants more time, uh, game time. He's in the middle today. We have two wingers, Rodney and Bennett. Hilton comes in on a fitness today, so I don't think he'll play the whole 90 minutes with Sinclair up top. I must admit, playing on this a cautious mentality with this low block does mean that the chances in the game are pretty few and far between. And it's a pretty low starting uh, tactic, if you will. Half an hour gone, 
and uh, no highlights. We have had th uh, seven shots and one on target, but Gateshead are, are giving us a game in this one. I think we are going to step it up to balanced. And we do get the first highlight. Sinclair there. Puts an absolutely stunning free kick. And no wonder he's doing this. Because that was absolutely stunning. What a free kick. Straight into the top corner. Matthews, the goalkeeper, is flapping around like a, well, a flapping thing. And misses it completely. 1-0 in the lead. Just into half time. And I think we're just going to say that was a good first half performance. Keep it up. I do have to be a little bit aware of the number of games that we're playing and game time. Hilton, uh, I think probably on the fitness, we're going to change him over for Kelly. So we'll just make the one change at half time. Do need to keep an eye on those two yellow cards though. Francois and Diallo, both on yellows. So 50 minutes on the clock now, five minutes into the second half. And uh, are we going to pick that up? We do. And I must admit, this, this uh, tactic and this formation does seem to be very good for the defence just stepping up and winning the ball. And uh, we do come away there with a nice counter-attack. And, uh, well, what do you know? It's a counter-attacking system. 58 minutes. Gate said now, trying to pin us back a little bit. But we do seem to be weathering the storm at the moment. Header out there from Rodney. Onto this side. Rogers now is going to put the ball back in the box. Rodney there though. This the mentality of this this tactic is that everybody works really hard and just play and plays and wins the ball all of the time. And we've done it again there. We've won the ball. We need to be a little bit more precise with our forward running. But at the moment, Bennett now is on the right hand side. Have we got players busting and got to get into the penalty area? This ball is coming over. Sinclair is very good in the air, but he doesn't actually get to that one. Nevit now on this left-hand side. Can we get the ball in the back of the net? Yes, we can. Tyree Sinclair with the second goal. Oh, and that is a great shame. We do seem to be getting quite a few offside goals this season. As you were, 1-0. Six, six minutes, two more changes. Simmons has come on on the left wing and the young kid Morehouse has come on in midfield. I'm very uncomfortable with these 1-0 score lines. All it takes is one, you know, set piece, a corner, a free kick and uh, you could have lost two points. But we do come back to a highlight here. Kelly swings that ball in low. A bit of a trademark for him. But that is taken out of the air by Matthews, the keeper. And with 10 minutes left on the clock, he's going to now try and mount an attack for Gateshead. But that is a very, very poor ball. And that is poor. Um, he, need, he should have brought that down on his chest, trapped it. But again, we see Bennett there coming back, winning the ball. And this, the mentality of this tactic is absolutely brilliant for just winning the ball back all of the time. It's just a little bit of a shame that it's not it's not as forward thinking as it is defensive. So goals are a little bit hard to come by. But Sinclair there this time. The linesman's flag is down. And we do score the second goal. Tyree Sinclair, his head is a weapon. I've said that before. His head is definitely a weapon. And Tyree Sinclair there rises above everybody and gives us a 2-0 lead. So we've done so well at the back today. And uh, Tyree Sinclair at the top. Nice header. 2-0. About 10 minutes left on the clock. Last two changes. Baines has come on at left centre-back. And Gilligan has taken over from Diallo as the ball-winning midfield player. And those changes have now taken effect. Hopefully we'll coast into these five minutes of time added. We do get a highlight though. And it's fortunately it's a highlight for us. It's a long throw. We have two lads there waiting for the ball in the box. That's going to get played inside. Kelly to Morehouse to Sherry. And it's in the back of the net. And Kedra Simmons there absolutely nearly busts the net with that one. 3 0. Another clean sheet by the looks of it. And uh, is this tactic actually going to take us forward? It seems to be working at the moment. But Simmons picks up the scraps there and just fires it into the back of the net. Right footed. 3-0 and this is absolutely brilliant well on side there as we can see 
and full time here at the Crown Oil Arena. 3-0 win and let's have a quick look. I mean, let's just say uh, it's about as good a win as you're likely to see. I think we will praise the players as well because uh, it's all uh, George Nevitt there. He's looking to, uh, is, what's he doing? He's looking to switch off. I think we're going to give everybody, though, a nice bit of praise there. A 3-0 win. Um, as per usual, though, the, the, the game will, will keep it nice and tight. So we're six points off for MK Dons. But Gillingham, let's have a look what Gillingham did. A 1-0 win at Crewe. So they're 42 points, level with us. And a Bradford City, a 4-1 at home against at Tranmere. So that dreaded fourth spot that we don't want is still only two points away. And not a bad little episode there. Four-point episode. Uh, the Gillingham game, uh, always going to be difficult against a promotion rival. Always going to be difficult, but getting a point away from home uh, is always a, a very, very, very good. Uh, even though at the time, I wasn't particularly happy with that because that's a Simmons uh, effort just within minutes of the end of the game, he could have put us 3-2 ahead and that would have been superb. But we can't look back, we have to look forward and that uh, the result against Gateshead, 3-0, absolutely brilliant. Okay, going to do the usual now. Go on, go on, uh, going to go and play some games off camera and we'll be back very, very shortly. We might even uh, squeeze that Norwich FA Cup third round game in where hopefully there'll be a full house and we'll earn a little bit of much needed cash. We need to get that turnover up so we can get that wage budget up. Will it happen? I don't know. But at the moment, all the signs are good for maybe promotion to Skybet League One. We can only hope. And I've got both fingers crossed for that. We'll see you next time. <laughs>